you guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the brand new Makeup Revolution skincare line called Revolution Beauty. I was super excited about this line. They just released a whole new line of skincare at Ulta. And their products are kind of along the same lines as The Ordinary in that they're really affordable, but yet they have great active ingredients. Some of these products, I looked at the ingredients and I'm like, oh gosh, this makes me want to run for the hills. But some of them actually look really promising. So rather than picking up the whole line, first of all, there's so many products, I could never pinpoint the results I got from each individual product. I wanted to just chat about the things I am interested in and some of the products that I think that you should totally avoid. This is going to be kind of like a Samantha March buyer buy esque style video. I'll let you guys know what I'm interested in purchasing and which ones I'm gonna totally avoid altogether. So we'll go ahead and get started because we have lots of products to talk about. So these products are cruelty free, they're vegan, and their prices are just so affordable. Frankly, I don't know how they got the prices down as low as they did because they really do contain some great actives. And I noticed they continued their whole duping thing with their skincare as well. You'll notice a lot of their products are very similar to The Ordinary. A lot of the formulations are even almost exactly the same. And there's one product that's pretty much almost just as similar as as one of the first Sally oils so that was kind of interesting to see but I'm excited to see that the prices were just as good as the ordinaries and that they're readily available at Ulta we can use our Ulta points yes amen for that so okay let's get into the product so the first product that I was really excited about is this Matrixel product this is a wrinkle and fine line reducing serum and it is $12 and the ingredient list is really short here. Basically, it's a bunch of humectants. And then at the end of the ingredient list, we have three different peptides. And they're specifically the matrixyl complex. So the matrixyl peptides are the most widely studied peptides. But the theory behind peptides is that they're supposed to stimulate more collagen production. It really hasn't been proven. They've shown collagen production in a Petri dish. But they haven't really done a study to actually show collagen production in a human skin. So it's kind of hard to say if peptides actually produce collagen, but they're well known for their humectant properties, and if anything, they're just gonna keep your skin really soft and supple and just really smooth. So you are gonna see a fine line wrinkle reducing effect from probably more of the humectant qualities than the collagen producing. There's a lot of research that still needs to happen with them, but still really excited to see these like well-known peptides in the serum. This is actually very similar to the number seven serum that I always talk about. A lot of these same peptides are in that serum as well. So that was really exciting and for 12 bucks I just feel like you can't beat it. So that serum sounds really promising. I think I might pick that one up. And then the next one we have here is the Mild Skin Exfoliator. It's a 5% lactic acid with hyaluronic acid. This is another product that is very similar to one of the Ordinary's product. I actually compared the Ordinary's lactic acid to Good Jeans. I almost got the same effects from that Ordinary product as I did from Good Jeans. Good Jeans, I see the results a lot quicker, but the Ordinary's, you definitely see them. It just takes a little longer. And looking at the ingredient list, lactic acid is pretty high up there. It's the third ingredient list. Listed. So that's really promising. It seems like you'll really see some great exfoliating effects from that. It's hard to say without knowing the pH. You can't really go by the 5% versus a 10% lactic acid. That's not really going to tell you the strength. It's going to be more to do with the pH of the product, which it's, that can be hard to find. Not all companies list their pH. But still, it being high up there, that's promising that you probably will see some brightening and evening of the skin tone. So that's really exciting. And there's further down, there's this ingredient, Pepper Tree Tasmanian Lac... I'm not even trying to pronounce that. But basically, it's a pepper tree fruit leaf extract. I tried to look up this ingredient. There's not a ton of things to say it's going to make dramatic improvements in your skin. But it does look like it's a soothing antioxidant. I know that antioxidants can prevent free radical damage. So that was exciting to see in there. And I did notice that it was in a lot of other skincare products as well. Looking at this and compared with the Ordinary's lactic acid, this contains xanthan gum. So that kind of gives almost like a gummy jelly texture to a lot of serums. So that kind of, that's one thing that turns me off a little bit. The texture might be a little bit more tacky than say the Ordinary's is. The Ordinary's has a very like thin liquidy consistency, which I actually really like because it absorbs it really nicely into the skin. So that's my like one hesitation with this. It's kind of in the middle of the ingredient list, so it might not be having that much of an impact on the consistency of the product. And Xanthan Gum is also in that Physician's Formula Serum that I love. I talked about that in my drugstore skincare video. So I don't know, maybe this could be pretty promising 
and I do like that the price is on point with Ordinary's. It's still $7. So yeah, I think I might pick this up and compare it to the Ordinary's lactic acid. I'm really intrigued. So this is definitely one that I'm interested in. Now, one that, this is the one that I was talking about that makes me want to run for the hills. They have this superfood extract, antioxidant rich serum and primer. But I looked at the components of this and I'm like, oh my gosh, I would never want this on my face. This freaks me out. So there's a bunch of different things in here. The ingredient list on this is a little bit longer. The first few things are some moisturizing humectants like this propendiol and glycerin butylene glycol and then right after the humectants we have fragrance listed and then comes all your fruit extracts there's blueberry extract in here there's elder fruit extract cabbage palm fruit extract I looked these up it doesn't really look like there's anything promising with these extracts if anything I feel like because we don't really know much about them if anything they could just irritate your skin but the fact that fragrance is listed fourth on the ingredients before all their active ingredients that kind of freaks me out. I just feel like that's a way too high of a concentration of fragrance. And I talked about this before, but I'm not completely opposed to scented products as long as they're further down, if they're last on the ingredient list, if a product doesn't have a super strong smell. We know that fragrance can be really irritating and sensitizing to the skin. So you really want to try and avoid them if you can. There's some products out there that I love that are scented, like my Herbivore Cloud Cream. It smells like a light scented rose, but that cream is beautiful and I just love how it makes my skin feel. But in this product, the fact that fragrance is so so high up there that just kind of freaks me out and brands do not have to list the specific components of the fragrance so them just saying fragrance could mean 50 different extra ingredients so yeah just the potential additional irritation from the fragrance and all these different fruit extracts I just don't see the necessity of this product I definitely think you could do without it and if you're looking for antioxidants in your skincare look for a vitamin C serum there's just way more studies out there to show the proven effects with vitamin C so I would rather put my money towards that than a bunch of different and fruit extracts that we really don't know if they have a benefit on the skin so this product I'm definitely gonna avoid I'm gonna pass on that one and that price I didn't even mention that it was $14 so I feel like that's pretty pricey for that product so yeah not gonna buy that one but this next one I'm actually really excited about they have a 10% serum with 1% zinc this is very similar to another ordinary product but the thing about this niacinamide it is third on the ingredient list and we know there's a ton of research on niacinamide it helps with brightening the skin it can actually help inhibit melanin production so it can help prevent extra pigment in your skin and it can help lighten the pigment you have in your skin also at high concentrations there's a lot of studies that show that niacinamide can actually help with fine lines and wrinkles so a lot of promising things with niacinamide and zinc if you are acne prone it can actually help with balancing sebum or oil production in your skin so those of you that are oily and can get cystic acne this could be a great product so super excited about this I love my niacinamide also a great price this is seven bucks and there is what like eight or nine ingredients on this list so I feel like they did a great job with avoiding irritating ingredients in this serum so this one I think I definitely will pick up I have my eye on this one for sure and then next up is their rosehip seed oil this is the product that is very similar to the Farsali rosehip seed oil that Farsali product I'm not a big fan of I talked about that before it's way too heavy on my skin I use it for dry patches but I have to be super dry to be able to use that oil so it's $14 and it has some very similar ingredients to the Farsali oil so the first ingredient is rosehip seed oil and people are so pumped about rosehip seed these days rosehip contains vitamin A and we all know that retin are a derivative of vitamin A so everybody is pumped about the potential anti-aging effects from rosehip seed oil again there's not a lot of ton of research on this but there are some promising things out there you really want to look out for cold press rosehip cold press has higher amounts of tretinoin and this formula does not have or at least it's not listed that it's cold press rosehip so I don't really know if you're really gonna get that anti-aging benefit from this or not you probably will get some emollient effects you're gonna get some brightening and some plumping of the skin but you might not have that like punch that you're going to get from those cold press rosehip seed oils. There's other good things in here. There's sweet almond oil and there's sunflower seed oil. There's actually a study out there, interestingly enough, with premature infants. This caught my eye being a NICU nurse, but they found that there was lower rates of infections in those preemies that were slathered with sunflower oil. So that's really promising and it shows that sunflower oil can actually help with repairing the skin's barrier and that if it repairs the skin's barrier, it may help with smoothing out the skin and helping with 
fine lines and wrinkles. So that's really exciting. So there are, like I said, there's some good things in here. However, there's also lemon and orange peel oil. If it just had the oils in here, I could get excited about this, but it has those extra citrus oils in here. So I think I'm gonna pass on this and just avoid this serum altogether. And then next up we have a collagen serum. So this is $10 and it has stabilized active collagen. Now the ingredient list with this is really short, so that is really nice to see. It has water in here, propendiol, which is your humectant. Third on the ingredients is collagen. Collagen is all over the anti-aging market. Collagen helps with elasticity and the bounciness in your skin. It can really help fill out fine lines and wrinkles. We know we lose collagen as we age. Now the thing with collagen, it would be amazing if we could just slather it all over our skin. It would fill out all our fine lines and wrinkles. It would absorb into our skin, but it's just too large of a molecule to get to where it needs to go. So unfortunately, you can't just replace collagen in your skin. But collagen, however, acts as an excellent humectant. It's gonna keep moisture in. It's gonna keep your skin nice, supple, and hydrated. And it's really known for its hydrating qualities. So if anything from the serum, you're just gonna get some nice moisture out of it. Your skin is gonna stay just nice and bouncy and supple, but don't expect your wrinkles to be filled out because of the extra collagen being plumped back into your skin. It just doesn't unfortunately work like that. But the serum still has me really excited. It's fragrance free and I'm all about hydration these days. So anything that's gonna give my skin a boost I don't know, it has me excited. So I might actually pick this up, especially now that my skin is on the drier side in these winter months. I might pick this up. It's $10, I might give it a shot. I've never really tried collagen in a product. I've been interested in the Derma E, I think it's called the Collagen and Peptide Serum, but just for the main fact that it gives some extra moisture to your skin, this might be a promising serum. So, and at $10, I think the price is right. And then next up is another one, when I looked at it, I just immediately was like, oh God, no, why would anybody want this on their face? No, no. So this is their gent Gentle Night Peeling Serum. It has quinoa in here. So second on the ingredient list is denatured alcohol which is a big no-no for me, especially with dry skin. Denatured alcohol can dry out your skin even more and it can be super irritating. It can be okay in certain circumstances. It actually can enhance the absorption of other active ingredients, but you really wanna make sure it's really far down on the ingredient list. It's probably listed as the second ingredient because of this being a peeling night mask, or is it, I guess, Wait, peeling serum? No, so you leave it on. Oh God. A lot of those peeling masks have alcohol in them because it helps the liquid to evaporate and it just causes that film to be placed on your face. But this tell this is telling you to leave it on overnight. Yeah, no, I would definitely avoid this. This does have some moisturizing things in here. It has glycerin, the propendiol, a lot of other extracts. We have a lot of citrus extracts, orange and lemon and quinoa is in here. So I did see that quinoa can be a soothing antioxidant, but I don't know, there wasn't a lot in here to show that it does have proven effects. This I'm gonna completely avoid altogether. It's $10. I definitely don't think this is worth it. Even if you have oily skin, I just, I don't know, I feel like this would be super irritating. So this is one product I'm definitely avoiding. And then next up we have their jar moisturizer. This is their Hydration Boost Lightweight Hydrating Gel Cream. This I'm kind of intrigued by. I don't know if I'll purchase it, but the ingredients look pretty good. There's a lot of moisturizers in here, and we have sodium hyaluronate in here as well. We know sodium hyaluronate is a natural component of our skin. It's a great humectant. So yeah, this seems like a really good one. There's no fragrance in here. There is citric acid as the last ingredient, but usually when you see citric acid listed way down below, it's usually just in there as a preservative. And there's vitamin E in here as well. So pretty good things in here. So I am intrigued by this. I'm going through a lot of moisturizers right now, so I probably won't pick this up, but I do feel like this moisturizer looks pretty promising. Okay, and then we have a peptide serum. Definitely into this one. This is their multi-peptide serum for $12. This is one or two peptides extra than the Matrixel serum that we first talked about initially. I really don't think you need both serums. If you're gonna pick one out of the two, maybe go with this multi-peptide one. You just might get a little bit more bang for your buck. But I don't know if one or two peptides is really gonna make a difference, but let's see, what's the comparison in costs? Okay, yeah, so they're both $12, so maybe just go for the multi-peptide one. I think you're gonna get just as much of a benefit out of this one as that first one. So that looks promising, really great peptides in there as well. It also has those Matrixel peptides. And then next up we have their Grand Active Retinoid 2%, another product that sounds very similar to an ordinary product. 
So this has grapeseed oil in here, sweet almond oil, and the sunflower oil. So a lot of great emollients are in here. And last on the ingredient list, we have the Grand Active Retinoid, or it's better known now, the abbreviated version is HPR. This is actually a retinoic ester. Everybody's super excited about this ingredient because it's supposed to be most similar to retinoic acid, and it's actually supposed to and it's actually supposed to bind directly to retinoic acid. And we know that retinoic acid is the purest form of retinoid on our skin. So that is great, that is what we want. And we know that if we buy an over-the-counter retinol, it has to be converted down to retinoic acid. So it's making your skin do that extra step. So it may not be as effective as your strong retinoic acids. So the fact that this is an ester and it's pretty similar to retinoic acid, people are just super pumped about this. There's not a lot of studies out there about it, but the studies that are are out there are pretty promising. Now they are conducted by the manufacturer, so it's hard to say if they're actually reliable results, but there's lots of emerging research. It has me super excited. And the one thing about this too, it's supposed to be less irritating than your traditional retinols. So that is another really promising thing about it. So I wouldn't put a ton of money into this ingredient, but for 10 bucks, I think it's really exciting. I'm pregnant now, so I can't use any kind of retinol, but I will try this in the future. So super pumped about that. I think that is definitely worth it. And then they have a net and then they have another retinol serum in the line. It's a 0.2% retinol. We know that over the counter, some companies don't actually list the percentage of retinol, but this, it's nice that they actually list it because you know the strength you're actually getting. Retinol in here is listed as less than the ingredient list. It's just listed as your traditional retinol. But above that, we have a bunch of different oils, grape oil, sweet almond oil, sunflower seed oil, also coconut oil. But I like to see that this retinol serum has a bunch of oils in here because hopefully that will counteract any extra irritation you can get from the retinol so that's really exciting this sounds also promising this is eight dollars a lot cheaper than the other one the oh, a lot cheaper two bucks cheaper than the retinoid so not that much of a difference so maybe if you're gonna try one out try out the eight dollar version and see how it works for your skin like I said the Gran active might be a little less irritating so if you have sensitive skin maybe go for the Gran active version two exciting retinols that are available in this line so that's super exciting so then they have the serum this EGF serum. EGF stands for epidermal growth factor. We have that naturally in our skin. This factor causes more cells to be reproduced. It's prevalent in your skin, especially if your skin needs some healing. There's actually a big study in the 80s to show that applying EGF to healing skin actually helped repair wounds quicker. They healed a lot faster. So it sounds like that's what kind of pushed it into the skincare market. They figured, hey, if this ingredient can help repair the skin, maybe it can help with further smoothing the skin, with fine lines and wrinkles. Now, the only thing with this is there's not a lot of studies to show that it helps with actually repairing fine lines and wrinkles. It's actually a polypeptide, so it's in the peptide family, and the specific peptide is, it's listed in here, and the actual specific peptide is this RH oligopeptide 1, which is actually the same peptide that's in the Drunk Elephant Protini Cream. Now, the Protini has a ton of other peptides in there. I think there's a total of nine peptides. This just has the oligopeptide or the EGF listed as the last ingredient in here. So with there being only one peptide in here being the last ingredient, I don't know if it's really gonna, I don't know how much of a punch it's really gonna pack, but the other ingredients look really good. Lots of humectants in here, and it's also a short ingredient list. Another promising one, I think if I'm gonna pick up a peptide cream, I might just go with a multi-peptide serum and avoid this one, but the fact that it contains the same peptide as the Drunk Elephant Pertini does have me intrigued. But I think I'll just pick up the peptide one and see how that works out, and then maybe I'll try this one out, but really exciting, and lots of really exciting emerging research with the EGF serums as well. So many of them are super expensive, so it was really exciting to see that this is available in a more affordable option. So good on you, Makeup Revolution, for being able to pack what we thought was a pricey ingredient into the serum. So that one's really exciting as well. I think that one could be really promising. And then last but not least, let's talk about this. And then last but not least, let's talk about this Skin Exfoliant Peel. This is a 3% AHA and BHA peeling solution. This is another one I think I'm going to avoid altogether. I love that it has a ton of AHAs in here. I'm all about my lactic and my glycolic acid these days. They are listed as third and fourth in the ingredient list, but right after the glycolic we have a lemon fruit extract. There's also passion flower, pineapple, grapefruit extract, all these fruit extracts that I feel like are 
so unnecessary. I know people say that they're naturally occurring AHAs and they do exfoliate the skin, but again, it's another thing that can be irritating and may add a pleasant fragrance to the serum, but I kind of feel like it's unnecessary. There's also salicylic acid in here, so that could help with acne. But again, we have all these fruit extracts. If I'm gonna put my money towards an AHA serum, I really wanna balance it out with other humectant ingredients, other moisturizing ingredients to help tame that irritation that I might get from the exfoliating properties of the AHAs. So this, I'm probably gonna avoid. I'm gonna stay away from this one. I know everybody loves that ordinary one. I forget what it's even called. It might even actually be called the same thing, this 30% AHA, but yeah, I don't know, just all these lemon extracts just kind of makes me nervous. So all in all, I think this line looks really promising, lots of good things. I especially can't wait to try out those retinols. After I have this baby girl, I'll definitely give those a try. And then the lactic acid serum looks really good. The peptide serum, they have so many good things. But I just wish, I would love to see some more maybe AHA serums without all those extra fruit extracts. I just feel like those natural fragrances are, are so unnecessary. And maybe like a good occlusive moisturizer too with like some good ceramides and peptides, maybe some shea butter. That would be really awesome to see. But everything looks pretty promising. I'm really pumped about the prices. So let me know what you guys are thinking about picking up from this line. What had you excited? What will you completely avoid altogether? And yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in my next one. See you guys.